Well, coming up on today's show, the new Tesla Autopilot hardware is confirmed to be a free upgrade. An update on the Audi e-tron from yesterday's show and the Kia Nero EV starts going on sale. Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening wherever you are in the world. Hello and welcome to the Friday the 10th of August edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here with the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. Well, we'll start with a, clar- a clarification, um, something that we've been seeking to find out for the last week or so ever since the Tesla earnings call when Elon bought the hardware guys in the autopilot uh, guys in to talk to investors and analysts on that call about advances in their own technology and ever since then a few questions have been rumbling around well last week we first heard about autopilot 3 coming later this year a date was put on that we knew autopilot 3 was coming at some point uh, but we knew that there was going to be an update before the end of the year however this new processing speed which we found out about last week new hardware on which autopilot and the neural network will sit is an order of magnitude faster than the hardware in existing teslas Elon musk was saying that whilst there's nothing wrong with the nvidia tech that's in the cars it is slightly older and i saw in, in response nvidia maybe it wasn't an official response but somebody from nvidia was saying well yes our tech in those cars is quite old it's quite old tech so tesla saying that they will upgrade the hardware from 200 cycles to 2000 cycles and that includes redundancy and nvidia saying well yeah we could do that as well but it's just they're using the old technology Uh, so some people saying that tesla aren't way out ahead of of all others in terms of this technology but it is custom hardware purely for autopilot the world's most advanced computer for autonomous driving and purely for autonomous driving is how tesla pitched it let's split this out into two different things though because i was a little confused i'm easily confused in fairness Uh, it's a simple brain that does this podcast however there's two things at play autopilot 3 and the new hardware autopilot 3 is coming before the end of the year this is the thing that will do on ramps off ramps be far more intelligent it will work with existing hardware the existing certainly existing cameras and sensors in the car but also the existing computer hardware under the enhanced autopilot package you'll get that so you've got enhanced autopilot when you purchase the car or maybe you purchased it after you got the uh, the car delivered on the over the air upgrade then you get autopilot 3 the new computer is full self-driving so if you purchased a tesla or thinking about buying a tesla one day and you wondered about spending five thousand dollars on full self-driving when there was no definite date in the future of when it starts if you did put that money down one of the things you do get for that five thousand dollars is this new hardware installed in your car so they've designed the new computer to be plug and play the plugs are the same i think the layout is exactly the same as far as i understand this is all efficiency gains in the hardware and although the headlines say that you get that for free really if you've spent all that money on full self-driving well you haven't got it free you've just prepaid for it so those are the two things split out uh, differently you'll need to take your car back for this new hardware when it's available to a service center or the mobile technician if it's operating in your area i imagine can fit one well electric pointed out that it consists of a new computer based on this new chip developed in-house not by nvidia and it's especially to run the computer vision of the neural network tesla's been using it to power the latest generation of autopilot it was a tweet i saw actually from fred lambert who writes for electric who really is electric uh, fred lambert tweeted elon Uh, to ask a question and it was the response which prompted this article Uh, well elon tweeted this and i quote probably four to six months those who order full self-driving get the upgrade at no cost it isn't needed just for enhanced autopilot end quote so there's confirmation there enhanced autopilot version 3 will work with the existing technology Uh, full self-driving will need this new hardware to handle how many cycles it needs to do to process all of the information I'll still put a link to the electric article in the show notes if you want to uh, read more, by the way. Well, the EV version of the Kia Nero, it's a crossover, sort of mini, little mini SUV, but I think they call them CUVs, don't they? I get confused with how many segments, they all start to look the same, a uh, little mini SUV, has gone on sale. It's gone on sale in Korea, so if you want one, I mean, South Korea is a beautiful place. You'll have to go there to buy one. It joins the Nero's existing hybrid and plug-in hybrid variants. The Korean car maker says it's received more than 5,000 pre-orders 
for the new EV, which is to go on sale in Europe before the end of 2018 and in North America in the first quarter of 2019, according to Charles Morris at Charged EVs. Now, that's interesting that Kia have actually uh, put out a stat on that, 5,000 pre-orders, because it's with the Hyundai Kona, sister company, of course, both owned by Hyundai Motor Company. Uh, they've been, I think, a little less transparent on how many uh, unless i'm wrong if you've seen an article where they actually say how many they've got in total then please send it on please correct me because i've kind of pieced it together from various countries so we know that norway had oh and a correction by the way let me get on to this uh, norway had 20,000 expressions of interest in that in the hyundai Kona. Uh, yesterday I said it was 20,000 orders and it's not 20,000 orders uh, for the Hyundai Kona. It's 20,000 expressions of interest. So which is, it's an important difference. I think <laughs> I think you'd agree. It's not 20,000 people putting their money down in Norway. The actual number I believe is 7,000 Kona orders in Norway, which is still a good amount, right? That's still okay. It was Daniel Milford on Twitter. Daniel Milford, thank you so much for getting in contact and correcting me on that. Uh, the orders in the UK, I think, I, I know are less, I think are less than a thousand, uh, but uh, the American sales for the Hyundai Kona start in, well, before the end of the year, deliveries next year though. So I don't know a number for that, but the Nero EV 5000 pre-orders goes on sale here in Europe before the end of the year, North America, once again, same as the Kona, first quarter of 2019. Well, the Nero EV's lithium polymer battery pack is the same sizes as its sister car, sits beneath the trunk floor, and it's available in 39.2, which is kilowatt hours, that's 153 miles, and the 64 kilowatt hour version, which is 239 miles, and they are, I would say, real world miles as well. 153 for the smaller one, or standard, I think they would rather I call it, and 239 for the long range. I think that's that's probably real world. The 150 kilowatt motor drives the front wheels. Acceleration from this on the Kia Nero EV, slower than the Kona, 7.8 seconds. And I think both are very nice cars. I'd happily have either, actually, uh, mainly because of the, the large battery pack size and the probable av availability being before a Model 3, at least here in the UK. Well, yesterday on the podcast, we were talking about the Audi e-tron and that mega regen test they did down Pikes Peak, uh, where they drove for something like 50 kilometers and added 50 kilometers of range into the battery. And Audi very proud of what they're doing with their regen. If you haven't heard yesterday's show, go and download it. It's online for free, like all of the shows in the archive, all 206 programs you can download if you find something in the subject title about one of the cars that you are particularly interested in. But just to precede that story, uh, it was all about he, uh, Audi being very proud of what they've done with their regen system and not simply levels one, two, three in terms of how aggressive the motors regen into the battery but doing things like using the radar to look at what's coming up in the road so that when you hit the brakes it knows whether to apply the friction brakes because you want to stop quickly or whether there's enough regen in the motors if they max out the regen to slow you quick enough for what it thinks you need to slow down for of course there's two motors in the audi e-tron on the front and the rear axles so yesterday we were talking about the power and there's actually slightly more nuanced power ratings for the e-tron so i thought i'd bring you that on today's show because lots of people i know are interested in the e-tron it's joel stockstale for autoblog that clarified this for me the e-tron's power is 355 horsepower, 414 pound-feet of torque as its main rating. The motors will do that for 60 seconds sustained acceleration. If you mash the accelerator for 60 seconds, that's the power you get. Beyond that, it starts to reduce the power and it hits the top speed on the e-tron of 124.3 miles an hour, which unless you are on the track or the German autobahns, if you're doing 120 miles an hour in most countries that you're listening to this podcast where you live and where you're listening right now, 120 miles an hour is license losing territory. So I'm not sure why you'd ever want to go that fast. But it'll do that for 60 seconds at maximum power. There is, though, an even higher mode, which I didn't realize and didn't talk about yesterday. The high power mode is activated only when the e-tron is in sport so you move from drive to sport and if you fully mash the throttle pedal and you fully depress it in that mode the power jumps from 355 horsepower to 402 horsepower and it will deliver that maximum power for eight seconds if you are beating something off the line for instance and i'm sure we'll see this activated in all those drag times and the drag tests and it'll start to 
Uh, you'll start to see loads of videos very soon when this hits the road. It'll be Teslas versus Audi e-trons. It's good. They're going to be engaging sport mode and having this eight seconds of very, very high power from the twin motors. If you're in the market for an Audi e-tron, would you buy a Jaguar I-Pace? or a Tesla Model X, or a Mercedes EQC, or have you heard so much about the Audi e-tron that you're thinking, that's the one for me? Uh, let me know in the YouTube comments or the Facebook comments. Well, let's talk about driver assistance and how well it works. On-road and track tests are helping the IIHS craft a consumer ratings program for these advanced driver assistance systems. So you know how good each one really is with this new consumer rating system. Evaluations of adaptive cruise control and active lane keeping show variable performance, they say, in typical driving, like approaching stopped vehicles, negotiating hills, going around curves. Uh, they say that unnecessary or overly cautious braking was particularly found in the Model 3. In 180 miles of testing in the Model 3, the car unexpectedly slowed 12 times, seven of which coincided with shadows from trees on the road. Well, the others were for oncoming vehicles in another lane or vehicles crossing the road, but far, far ahead. Well, I don't know about you, but I would rather, if I'm in full self-driving, I'd rather it was overly cautious than overly optimistic. I mean, you don't want a car that thinks, you know what, I think I'll make it. I think I'll be all right. Hold your breath. I think I want a car that goes, you know what, I'm just going to start to slow down. Because the point of this is that the braking events they refer to in the Model 3 were very gentle. Of all the cars they tested, all the different brands they tested that all do these kind of advanced driver assistance things, only the Model 3 stayed within its lane on all 18 separate trials. Well, the Model S was similar, but overcorrected on one of the curves, uh, causing it to cross the line on the inside of the curve in just one of the trials. None of the other systems, it's worth saying this, none of the other systems tested provided enough steering input on their own to consistently stay in their lane, often requiring the driver to provide additional steering to successfully navigate the curve. Now, I must confess, I've never used any of these advanced systems out on twisty, turny roads. And so when you look at those most recent systems, things like the Hindi Kona, for instance, and Bjorn Nyland's done a, a great kind of two-hour test of that on separate YouTube videos, but any time I saw him using it was on highways, on motorways, on those main roads. And so we know from all the experience of autopilot uh, in the Teslas, it's been getting better and better and better, in, at least in this version, Autopilot 2, all the time. And interesting to see where the podcast began, that story of new hardware, new Autopilot 3, how that might change these tests. Also, I think really good news that there is a body that is starting to put together rating systems for these systems, because at the minute they're all a little bit... All the language used is very different. All of the car makers have their own brand language for it, and it's not quite clear. And indeed, many people say Autopilot is the wrong name to use for a system that is not, at the moment, Autopilot. They tend to think of people in aircraft where they take off and land the plane but otherwise the plane really is on autopilot can we move on can we talk about udders yes i said it there's only one word for it udders i could say teats but that sounds a bit weird right uh, tesla's official twitter account tweeted out a video of their paint shop of a uh, they put a gopro on the end of one of those paint heads and then if you've seen this you've got the car body in metal, it's welded together. And then, if you've ever seen these YouTube videos of, you know, like how it's made, uh, you know, how factories work, everything that a car paint shop in action, these paint heads fly, these robots fly around the car, chucking on the paint really quickly. In all, it's not just Tesla, in all, all paint shops. And I must say that the machine that they have strapped the GoPro to, the one that Tesla uses, does look like the paint head is a load of cows' udders. It's the only way to possibly describe it. Well, the video also coincides with the launch of Obsidian Black for the Model 3. Uh, well, not the, the, the launch, let me clarify. The launch was over a month ago. The production is now underway for the Obsidian Black coming to the Model 3. And fascinating to watch. Go check out the official at Tesla on Twitter. And it's a bit addictive. And it's in, as far as I know, it's in real time as well, by the way. Uh, boy, oh boy, that is fast. Well, a couple more stories, by the way. And two years ago, Elon Musk promised the world that Tesla would produce solar panels virtually indistinguishable from roof tiles, but his solar factory isn't producing panels that are to his liking yet. And that's leading to some major production issues, according to a new report from Reuters. It was Jennings Brown from Gizmodo that brought this to my attention, and he gives us the lowdown in his writing. Current and former employees of Tesla and Panasonic told Reuters, 
that the solar factory was hitting production snags because of the assembly line problems and difficulties meeting Elon's aesthetic desires. Aesthetic look is a key point that Elon has talked about over the, over the years with the solar roof. One unnamed former Tesla employee in California told Reuters that's the big issue. And let me just go back and say what I just said. An unnamed former employee. So uh, be careful with a Reuters story based on one person who doesn't work there anymore. You never know what their motivation is. However, for the article, a Tesla spokes uh, spokesperson did reply and said this, we are steadily ramping solar roof production a giga two, sorry, giga factory two, shouldn't use shorthand, I'm sorry, not in an official statement, in Buffalo and are already continuing to iterate on the product design and production process, learning from our early factory production and field installation, end quote. Full gizmo, uh, Gizmodo article in the show notes, by the way. I think this is a great idea. I think this is great. There is no... Why would you rush something to market when if you just wait three or six months, you're going to get this beautiful solar roof absolutely ready for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Elon says the roof will outlast the house. He says it's beautiful. And we know his attention to detail. And I, I know that the contrary phrase would be, you know, what Elon wants, Elon gets, because he's a billionaire that can afford to do these kind of things. But thank you for people like that who aren't running a company by the budget books, who aren't saying, well, it's good enough, let's get it to market, let's start to get some of the money back on the investment. He's there going, no, it's not good enough yet. Come on, we can do better. I love that. Well, a company that's selling plenty of cars is BYD, Build Your Dreams, it stands for, if you didn't know. According to an announcement of BYD uh, yesterday, no, two days ago, the company sold 18,793 new energy vehicles in July alone. I mean, we talk about hundreds uh, for other makers, but BYD doing almost 20,000 in the month. From January to July, H1, the first half of the year, it sold 93,677 new energy vehicles. Okay, I've just got time for a couple more stories, actually. Uh, bear with me on these, and I think you're going to like these because, uh, firstly, it's about home energy and the single-phase electricity supply system here in the UK. It's been the norm since before the Second World War. should be scrapped for new homes. A new report as urged by the REA, the Renewable Energy Association, says that new homes should be fitted with three-phase electricity for solar, heat pumps, and electric vehicles. EVs are going to be a crucial part of our future. Let's make the make sure the homes we build are fit for purpose. Finally, Fleet News brings news of anyone that drives their own car and then claims back some miles with their company, HMRC, uh, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. That's who collects the money off of us here in the UK. It's going to introduce an advisory fuel rate for pure electric cars, pure BEVs only, from September the 1st. The rate is four pence per mile. Now, the new rate has been set at 4p and is published alongside new rates for petrol and diesel and LPG cars. Plug-ins and hybrids, by the way, so anything with an engine uh, will continue to be treated as a petrol or diesel car. Only pure BEVs get this. Uh, four pence per mile is the advisory rate. They say, the tax office say, HMRC say, uh, if you reimburse your employees or if you're an employee and you drive your own car for business and you have to put mileage in, uh, in this country you can put in for four pence per mile. They say that on that they'll be, you won't be getting any profit. Uh, which means you won't get taxed on the mileage and no nationally, national insurance contributions to pay. Well, that's the news today. Thank you very much for listening. I've got some new Patreon supporters to say hi to on tomorrow's show, by the way. I'll stack them up uh, for tomorrow's show. Uh, no special interview this week. It'll be a regular news show on Saturday, but it'll be the very first of our bonus Saturday episodes for the Patreon supporters who do support me at the $10 or more level. You do get the extra shows every single week. On a Saturday, we do a deep dive into the stories of the week with more details that we didn't get time for on the regular shows. Thank you very much for everybody on Patreon who is continuing to uh, have a look at patreon.com slash ev news daily that is patreon.com slash ev news daily it is not by any means anything that you have to think about doing totally optional but for those who are helping me out with all of the costs with the podcast i massively appreciate it really it massively helps thank you so much uh, all previous 206 episodes of the podcast are now on itunes google play spotify youtube chin in and stitcher for free there's a blog at evnewsdaily.com and if you subscribe on any of those channels you get them first and free and automatically the podcast will always be free i never want this to be anything that you have to pay for or even to act like a lot of people pay to access podcast archives no never will always be free uh, and on the socials, come and say hi by searching EV News Daily, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you tomorrow.